Check it. No, no, this is just me and JD figuring out how we don't we don't really go ham on the radio right now. Just <laughs> keep it pretty simple. That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. He's That's the awesome. Best. He's the best. Hey, I want to ask you. Uh, you know, we were discussing that uh, you, you're seeing more of Kyler on the sideline, either having interaction, negative interaction. It looks like, at least from a fan perspective, with with Cliff, and now yesterday with DeAndre Hopkins. Is there more to that than meets the eye? Or are we just fans just looking for some dirt? Well, you know, it's funny. For the first two years, he said nothing on the sidelines. It looked like he you know, either had a real real bland look on his face and uh, like he was just out of it in some states. And then, you know, the third year of his career, he seems like he has a little bit, of, con- a little bit more conversation. But when he gets a check and the bag shows up. <laughs> the bag, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got a little more. He got a little more moxie about himself on the sidelines now. So, uh, you know, it's funny, Rock. I heard you said earlier, man. I, I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's smoke right there that's going to turn into a big, a big fire, big fire, big blaze of fire. Yeah. Um, between him and D Hops, because you're looking at a receiver that's gone from, you know, at least over 12 targets in the last two games to just getting no more than five targets in this game, and uh, and then it seemed like he just fell apart after the second half, which was the you know the post part of him and that conversation on the sideline. So I like I like that Kyler's all engaged in that that conversation. Um, I'm gonna have to back away a little bit and say that D Hop said it's you know he likes that his quarterback is competitive and um, we just had a we had a little conversation and that's what's supposed to happen. And he likes it. So I'm gonna just try to trust D Hops on that because I know D Hops in the past when he was in Houston, if he didn't like it, he'd tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just sense a little frustration with D Hop when they, they showed him after plays and you know being targeted to your Correct. point, Frank, about you know twelve to fifteen times and the four catches he had. Then you know Rondell Moore, you know here he is with with the eight catches he had yesterday, but you only had one long run. Um, I just I I sense D Hop sees things happening with the play calling and the way that the offense is run. He doesn't agree with, but he does a pretty good job of keeping himself in check. But you do see some. His facial expression sometimes when he sees the play go away or or Kyler go get sacked or whatever. I don't know if you see that as well too. I watch it. I'm watching body language with yeah. D-Hops because I know that you know it's important that they keep him engaged. Um, I think not, not just because he's from a selfish standpoint or arrogant standpoint. It's that I'm here to help you guys win. And if there's one guy on me, I'm open. If there's two guys on me, I'm open. And I think that. That's just his mentality about it. I think that there are scenarios that took place in the game that I saw. D. Hops looked like he was he was open. He would have been it would, they on the left side of the trips formation would have been the one read, but he went backside and and that to me, I think those are things that D. Hop brings to the table. Um, it's interesting to watch this offense act like it wants to elevate and develop. And then right after, you know, maybe one series or two series, it goes back into the mundane thing that we've been watching. And unfortunately, Johnny B, that's exactly what we've been getting. And I think that you, me, and everyone else that's watching Cardinal football is, is just tired of watching the same, the same, the same system and scheme, um, just not work. And, and I mentioned that a little bit earlier. I don't know if that's the hard headedness of, Cliff Kingsbury, or Frank, maybe that's all he really knows, um, which is unfortunate because after four years, um, you've got to grow into that play calling. And as a head coach, and along with your along with your your quarterback, I think that's where the frustration lies with a lot of us. Is we're not seeing the growth. It it seems to be stagnant. And when you do see that that flower start to bud, it seems to wilt all within the same day. It does. Let, let, let's 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 put this on the table real quick. I think that the NFL has kind of gotten to the place where they 100% believe players make plays regardless of coaching. I think that's just on the table. That yeah. They believe players make plays regardless of coaching. There is no coaching for what Mr. Allen is doing over in Buffalo. There's no real coaching for what, you know, what Mahomes can do with that sidearm throw. And then when you see Aaron Rodgers just sit back in the pocket with that laser arm and just throws balls to, at, at one moment when he had his, when you had a boy over there, it just it felt like it, they could do anything. And I think sometimes we're, we're missing the idea that teams like Seattle, when they come in and they know that they don't have all, they don't have great players, they have some good players. 
but great coaching will trump sometimes just having athletic players. Yes. And we saw that. We watched it with Minnesota, who came out with 100 yard rushing. Tight ends destroyed us for the most part, like we've seen in the past, the last two weeks. 200, two back to back 100 yard rushers. And I think that you, you can't forget that there's a scheme in place. There needs to be a scheme in place and a game plan in place that need to be followed with the intent to, you know, win over or win, win, win against your opponent. Um, in a chess match, you're using your pieces and your pawns better than the other uh, coaches doing his. And I don't, and I, that's one thing I think we're missing. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing the scheme and the and the trickery and the stuff that will leave guys wide open. And I think that to me is man, one hundred. It's one hundred percent disappointing to me. And I think that's the problem. We're looking at Kyler to do everything. If Kyler doesn't do it, D Hop's got to do it. If D Hop doesn't do it, then it's not the play calling. It's not the it's not the reverses and the setting up the defense to to make them do what you want them to do. I call that in, a, in on our side of the ball when it's, when the offense is attacking, mm-hmm. then the defense is just they're just basically they're the pawns yes. on the board. Yes, and there's nothing they can do. But when the offense is just trying to find one play, you know, you play in chess. If it's just three mm-hmm. move thinking, then you are already in trouble to a guy that can play that's that's, that's three moves ahead of you. And I think that's what we're watching in the fans. We're not stupid. We've seen it. We've seen bad football for years, and then we had a glimpse of really good football. And right now, it looks like we're back at bad football. All right, let me follow up with that then. Today, the Indianapolis Colts uh, fired Frank Reich as their head coach. Is it time for something that drastic to take place with the Cardinals, or are you still waiting? Frank is a good coach. I mean, I think that Frank Wright is a really good coach over in Indianapolis. He didn't have his pieces that he needed. Guys got injured, and, and I think that it, it put him on the hot seat. Mm-hmm. The difference in that situation here, Cliff has the pieces, and he got a new contract. And so there should be there should be a conversation where he should be playing better and doing better. We're talking about a coach that started his his NFL career at five and ten. Make sure he went eight and eight. The following year, he went eleven and six. And, Lost in the playoffs, and now we're three and six. And I think that's the part where you've been watching not necessarily anything change in the offense or the team, per se, in its mannerisms, how it's going to be great, what's supposed to be developed, who is being developed. And my, in my best opinion, because Mike is Mike, Mr. Bidwell is Mr. Bidwell, and I'm speaking in regards to Mike Bidwell, I don't think he's going to fire him right now. I don't. I think that Ursa over in Indianapolis had enough. I don't think Mike has those same regards when it comes to what he just did with Steve Collins and Cliff Kingsbury, and I'm sorry to say that to not just you, Jimmy D, but not to everyone else that's listening. Okay, way to bring Frank. Uh, yep. 